We're very fortunate now in our interview to be joined by Ray Kurzweil. Ray is a iconic computer scientist and among the world's most acclaimed futurists. His writings on artificial intelligence and the future of technology have influenced the way that we think about them. Ray is also a co-founder of Singularity University, dedicated to empowering leaders through exponential technology education. His latest book, The Singularity is Nearer, When We Merge with AI, Ray is also Google's chief futurist. Ray, we're very fortunate. Thank you for your time today. I'll get right to it. Ray, the beyond me, the AI humanoid robot, what trillion dollar markets can it enter? Well, it's good to see you, Angelo. Thank you. Uh, I've seen you a couple of times. It's great to interact with you. Uh, we're getting close to achieving human level intelligence with computers. There are several projects, for example, to eliminate hallucinations, which is one of the problems uh, with current uh, large language models. Um, as far as verbal skills are concerned, large language models will be far more advanced than humans within one or two years. But to truly emulate everything that humans can do, AI must master all of our physical capabilities as well. There are many trillion dollar markets that this will unlock, basically about half our economy. We need to, first of all, create robots that can perform physical skills in every field. For example, in medicine, construction, materials management, hospitality, and much more. This process has already begun. Then they will have to learn to blend these specific industry-based skills together in order to pursue each of these markets, something that is eminently feasible and is now starting. For example, today, if we want help cleaning up after dinner party, that's a very simple task, but computers have not yet done that, uh, but we now have the ability to do that, we can direct one or more humanoid robots to do exactly that step by step. This is already feasible. However, going forward, we will rely on large language models to generate and implement the instructions. We can direct one or more humanoid robots to do exactly that. This is already feasible. However, going forward, we will rely on large language models to generate and implement the instructions. These models will go beyond language. So we should really be uh, calling them large events models. <laughs> the model will note that there are many different processes to follow depending on the condition of each object. So it has to be flexible, which these models are. If a plate is just soiled, the robot would pick it up and place it in a dishwasher. It would need to learn when to put it inside of the dishwasher, note when the dishwasher is full. If there was a large piece of food still on the plate, it would need to wash it off in a sink before placing it in a dishwasher. If a bowl had food in it to be saved, it would need to place it in a refrigerator or freezer. Uh, obviously, there are many other processes that are needed, but if it watches this, it would uh, learn all these different processes and be able to generalize from them. Given the flexibility of large event model learning, it would be flexible enough to perform all tasks correctly. So this is actually feasible now. When learning, the robots will need to continue to train in the physical world so they can perform all tasks correctly on different types of input. But given the flexibility that we have already seen in large event models, uh, this will become very feasible. Humanoid robots will be able to do every task relating to setting, clearing, cleaning tables in the hospitality industry. Uh, this approach, merging large event models with humanoid robots, can and will be applied to many trillion dollar markets. For example, we're already training robots to build houses from the ground up and they're going to expand into every type of construction. Um, 
we will need several humanoid robots to work together to carry large heavy objects like lumber and steel. But once one robot can learn to carry objects uh, or hammer them together or bind them uh, and do all of the many types of tasks to build homes, bridges and roads, this market will accelerate quickly. We can also use large event models to train robots to create and oversee indoor vertical farms to grow and harvest an abundance of fruits and vegetables uh, in locations that are not conducive to, to traditional outdoor horizontal agriculture. In medicine, humanoid robots will perform every kind of test if the testing equipment is available. They will also carry out every type of treatment, basically emulating what nurses do. We'll have large event models that are powerful enough to create humanoid robots to emulate everything that doctors now do. In terms of product distribution, humanoid robots will perform all tasks from end to end. So companies such as Amazon already have specialized equipment to help accomplish this. But once there's an enormous market for humanoid robots and their future versions, they will become very inexpensive and accessible to all businesses, large and small. They'll perform root, root te retail work, including sophisticated jobs that require customer interaction. After all, AI's language skills are already more advanced than its physical skills today. So basically, everything we now do with our bodies and minds will be feasible for humanoid robots, and they will be able to do more, like save people from dangerous situations that are too risky for human emergency workers, and there's many different situations like that that are feasible. These physical tasks comprise approximately half our economy if you go through them all. Humanoid robots are starting out with routine tasks, but over time they'll do everything that humans can do with our hands and bodies. Look at the enormous progress we've made with LLMs, large language models, in just the last two years we're going to see the same rapid progress in the physical world now that we have basic human-centric robots. By merging large event models with humanoid robots, we will transform every industry, including medicine, manufacturing, hospitality, and consumer markets, basically half our economy. Ray, as my final question, I really look forward to reading your book. I've read many of your prior works. So your upcoming book is The Singularity is Near Er When We Merge with AI. It's an entirely new book with a fresh perspective on the advances towards singularity. I believe you were assessing in 1999 a prediction that AI will reach human level intelligence by 2029. If you could talk a little bit about your new book. Yes, well, I mean, I have a graph that shows the exponential growth of computing power. Uh, and when I came out with that, that was kind of, kind of controversial, but it's really shown to be uh, quite accurate. And so I had this graph in 1999 and saw that we'd get to about a trillion transactions per second uh, per constant dollar uh, by around 2029. And based on other research, I, f I figured that would be sufficient to create something that would basically do everything that humans do uh, by, that, by that time. And so I made that prediction in The Singularity is Near, which, which came out in 2005. I've written about 11 books, but that's been my most popular. And so this is a follow-up with all new content, but it basically corroborates what I said in 2005, uh, that we will have uh, AGI by 2029, if not sooner. Uh, some people like Elon Musk say it's going to happen in two years. I'm saying five years. But uh, when I actually said, said this in 2005, Stanford, which was monitoring my predictions, felt that that was very alarming. And they called it a worldwide conference of AI experts. And several hundred people came from around the world and they all agreed with me that this would happen, 
but not within 30 years. They said it would take 100 years. <laughs> and I've actually talked to people now who were at that conference, and they agreed that I was correct. And they said 100 years and that that was wrong. Uh, it's probably going to happen before 2029. Uh, so this book is, shows what's happened in uh, AI and what's going to happen and how basically corroborates everything that I said originally uh, and, and brings us up to date on what's going to happen with, with AI. If you just look at the fantastic progress we've made in the last two years, just imagine what five years will do or 20 years. 20 years will actually integrate uh, with artificial intelligence. Uh, it'll make us uh, a million times smarter. Uh, that's such a uh, fantastic uh, issue that we can't really imagine it. That's why we call it the singularity, borrowing this phrase from physics. Uh, and this really brings us up to date on, on what I originally uh, forecast. That's all awesome. right. I'm 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 a little concerned if we may, you're already a million times smarter than everybody else. So if you're <laughs> a million million times stronger, I'm a little concerned. I just wanted to that, thank you, Ray, for your continued support and and uh, coming here and in the support you've been giving uh, since we began. Pleasure to work with you, Harry. And Ray, it's been an honor. Thank you for your time today. I really look forward to reading your book, and I appreciate your contributions, not just briefly to my show, but to society and humanity. I very much look forward to seeing, with a little bit of fear, how this all plays out. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, my pleasure. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.